Welcome to making the Stuart Model Steam Plant. This is part 75, nearly there now. Cutting a gasket for the double ten V to prevent leaks and planning an adjustable mounting for the generator. I initially had the idea of mounting the double ten V on a special plinth with a central drain area so that all the oil and water would run away instead of going all over the baseboard. I need to make and fit a gasket between the engine's box bed and the mounting plinth. I'm wiping away the oil residue, but I won't be able to do this once the engine's permanently mounted in position. And for that reason, I need to make a gasket to seal the box bed onto the plinth so that the oil and water will be always inside the box bed and will drain away through the central sump to the main sump via a pipe. Before I start this job, remember that you cannot put double 10 Vs straight down onto a bench because the flywheel protrudes slightly below the box bed. And that's why in this image, the piece of gasket material is on the baseboard and the flywheel is overhanging on the edge. The next part of the job is very simple. Using my specially modified pencil, I'm just drawing round the gasket. Why is this pencil modified? So it can become a deep hole marker, like this. Making the end of a pencil much smaller on my one inch belt sander makes a tool that is much better than the felt tip pen type of deep hole marker because the original diameter of the pencil is much less than the felt tip pen. All I have to do now is cut out the shape of the gasket using a pair of scissors, then make the holes in the gasket for the mounting bolts using a hole punch. I'm going to shorten this sequence. Here's the finished gasket and I'm punching the holes. The gasket will need a little bit more trimming, but this is the size to start with. All I'm going to do is mark around the gasket using a felt tip pen and then cut to the line. And while I'm at it, I will blacken the edges with the felt tip pen so the gasket is not so visible. I need to mount the generator that will be driven by the Stuart S50 steam engine, but I need to make it adjustable. I'm giving this job a considerable amount of thought. There are many ways to do this. I need to make a mechanical contrivance that fits to the baseboard and to the generator so that the generator can be moved away from the engine to tighten the drive belt. I have to start somewhere, so why not start with a piece of 3mm brass cut into a rectangular shape. The easiest way to do this job is to mill a slot on the centre line of the longest part of the rectangle. Then once I bolt the generator to the piece of brass, I can make a pair of knurled thumb screws which will allow me to adjust the position of the generator. I don't think that's a very good idea though. I'd like to take a leaf out of the book of the generator adjuster on my traction engine. Obviously the adjustment on this is much smaller than on my 45 inch scale traction engine. I'm still at the stage of thinking through this project. I do this a lot. First of all, I think about it in my head. Then I add other components, like this drive belt. This, of course, is a thick elastic band, but it's going to be very useful for making sure that the dynamo is in the correct position. Ideally, when the flywheel is turning, the belt needs to stay on the dynamo. Just like in full-size practice, I do want to use a flat belt to drive the dynamo. I really don't want to machine the flywheel and the dynamo pulley to take the spring-type drive belts. When I think about it, an elastic band in a darker colour would probably work quite well. The position of the dynamo relative to the flywheel is critical so that the belt stays on both of them. I don't want the dynamo to be this close to the steam engine either. Ideally, the position of the dynamo needs to be about halfway between the engine and the lamp standard. As I said earlier though, I do not have the design as I want it just yet. I think I need to make another plate to mount the dynamo on, and then the plate can slide on this plate with adjusters at each end. One viewer wrote in and suggested that I could mount the dynamo so it would swing back and forth to tension the belt, but I didn't like that idea. Once I've figured out what I'm going to do, I'll make a video about it. This steam plant's taken a long time to complete, mainly due to the amount of work I had to do on the engines and various other parts of the plant. It's time to remove everything from the baseboard and finish the baseboard. I'll remove all of the parts from the baseboard in the next episode. But that's it for now. Stay safe and healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. 
please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.